I've been trying to think what it is that this shape reminds me of, and last night it came to me. You know when a dog's doing its number twos, that kind of arched back thing? That's what it is! Hideous! Ugh. Tell you what, though, you know in the olden days when people actually had capris? They always had the bonnet up on a Saturday tinkering around with the engine. Fettling. Exactly. Well, nowadays, people always fiddle around with computers. Yeah. So what this has got, which is amazing, well, if they ever get around to putting a bonnet in it, which they haven't at the moment, it'll have a... Plug. A plug, plug port, port thing. You put your laptop in it and you'll be able to adjust, like, the rev limiter and the suspension settings and everything. But it goes further than that. It's very clever because once you've got your laptop plugged in, you can then uh, log on to the internet and you can actually download specifications and settings direct from Ford, and better than that even, you can then exchange data with your mates and their Vsauce. So if you got one, I could set the rev limit at, like, 1,500 RPM. Have the headlamps flash every time we went above 10. <laughs> not, not quite what they meant there, really. Or don't. even better, if you get stuck behind one on the road, what you could do is dial up its computer from your laptop, Bluetooth, mobile phone, speed him up a bit. <laughs> <laughs> 50, and that's... then just apply one of the rear brakes. Yeah, that's just stupid. <laughs> it's stupid. This is my favourite, though. It's a sort of radar parking device. Normally, I look for really easy parking spaces, but in the BMW, I look for the tricky ones, just for the fun of it. I want to just do this award, if I may. It's the Enemy of the State Award, the person <laughs> who's done the most to harm the cause of the petrol head these last 12 months. Gentlemen, the nominations. The Chief Constable of North Wales, Richard Brunstrom, for his resolutely unpopular anti-motorist stance. There are no more nominations. <laughs> <laughs> so, the winner is the Chief Constable of North Wales. This is the man who described speeding motorists as criminals. And then regretted it shortly afterwards when one national newspaper allegedly caught his daughter speeding. <laughs> Actually, this is, this is also the man who said there is no more excuse for drifting over the speed limit than there is for drifting a knife into someone. <laughs> <laughs> which, which, which really isn't true, is it? It's, uh, it's interesting to note that in April of this year, as his war on the motorists carried on, his force posted the lowest clear-up rate for burglaries ever on record. I love people's faces in traffic jams. Oh, is it so miserable? Could be worse. You could be shot in the back of the head by a marksman. All right. You are an executive. This is going to take a bit of imagination. You're an executive, OK, and you're going to buy a new car. You're not going to buy that S-Type Jag, are you? It's no. a great drive, but you wouldn't let your kids sit around with their mouths open like that. No. <laughs> E-Class Mercedes. Now, you've got a Mercedes. How much have you enjoyed it over the summer? No, I haven't. It's been in the shop the entire time. It goes in, it's broken, it comes back more broken and goes in again. That's right. pretty much Mercedes ownership. These so you're days. not having one of those? No. You're not having an Audi A6 because it's too old? Uh, no. You're not having a Kia Magentis because it's I stupid? Might. No, you wouldn't. No, you're right, I wouldn't. And you're not going to have an Alpha 166 because nobody would buy a new one? Yeah. You, Jeremy Clarkson, you are the European Director of Photocopying, brackets, toner, distribution, you will buy one of these. I've suddenly decided I don't want to talk to you anymore. Obviously, you shouldn't listen to those people who say, oh, we can't tell it's a diesel under the bonnet. Sounds just like a petrol, because it doesn't. It sounds like it's been fueled with sandpaper. But, crucially, it's not so noisy that I can't hear Ken Bruce's potmaster. Titles of three UK single chart hits for Squeeze. Three Call for Cats, labelled with love, at the yep. junction. Come on, useless man. Easy. Hi, Jeremy. With an exclamation mark. It's very irritating. Um, my book, this is from Claire, and she signed it with a little X, which is like a little kiss. <laughs> My boyfriend has just bought a new Audi A3. Fair enough. Now he's driving me mad with this new game he has where he tries to flip the remote locking from as far away as possible. Is he normal? 
Yes, clearly. In fact, I'd say, if anything, he sounds like a bit of an amateur. Yeah, because it's how you do the flip In that fact, matters. Claire, I'm, go Claire, I'm going to... This is for your fella. I'm going to show some moves here. Yeah. I've got, I've got some special yeah. ones. This, um, this first one is called the Bond, and it's perhaps more of a closing manoeuvre. So the car's there, and you, you walk away from your car thus, and then at the last minute, you turn and fire. <laughs> That's the, it's a simple, good one to start with, I reckon. Keeping the range good. Yep. I quite like the high shot. If you could demonstrate it's, that. Uh, well, the, the true high shot is that. Uh, the, the That's the high the shot, which we like very much. Then there's a really good one, which is the I've lost my car in the multi-storey. Uh, that's, that's also known as the lawn sprinkler. Like that. <laughs> Waiting, for the, like that yes. <laughs> Waiting for the things <clears throat> to cover. All this stuff is being spoiled by these things. This is keyless entry, OK? Now, they tell us that when you walk up to the car, if you've got one of these in your pocket, the door is open, OK? So I was walking up to the car, opening the door, thinking, that's fine, you get out, lock it, and you assume, if you walk away, it'll lock itself. It does, doesn't it? Well, this is it. You've got a 100 gram Merc, and you think, is that locked? So you go back, and it's open, and you think, well, it would be. <laughs> Bound to be, So yeah. you have to say to passers by, so could you just hold that? <laughs> then you go back, and then you find out it doesn't lock itself. Yeah. You have to push a button. How uncool is that? That's very cool. <laughs> I must say that I think they're going the wrong way with these sort of pairing... Oh, them, back, actually. ...with these key cards, pairing them down to nothing. I think if they really want to know their market and appeal to, let's be honest, us chaps, they should go the other way mm. and make them more elaborate. Odd one here from Steve Rowland. We have a cat called Stig, so can you please change the name of your racing driver to something other than Stig, because every time you're programmed on his sleep is disturbed when you mention the Stig's name. <laughs> Actually, come to think of it, Stig. <laughs> See those slippers? Pee in them. <laughs> now, you may remember, last week, we discovered that if you hold your car's remote control central locking device against your head, it doubles its range, OK? Mm. Now, we didn't understand that. No. There was a girl in the audience last week who was a scientist, and she said it had to do with the fillings in your teeth. Yeah, but we tested that. We, we did. The, our producer um, deigned to come into work one day, Which and nice. he has no fillings in his teeth, and it worked for him, so it isn't that. Mm. Um, loads of people have written to us, and all we've been able to discover is that uh, no scientists watch Top Gear. No, that much is clear. <laughs> Not one. Uh, there's a chap here who says the reason is it's because your body acts like a grounding plane, which sounds good, it sounds a, a sort of plausible explanation, but then you read on and he's got a, 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 a GSX-R1000, which I, I believe... That was brilliant! Yeah. He's a biker, a sound fellow, I believe. And lots of people think it is your body that does it. A uh, guy here, Craig from Bromley, reckons it's because your body has iron in it. Well... Yeah, but it does, but a tiny bit. I have no iron in my body. I am pure fat. All the way yeah, I am just fat from here down. Well, fat and hair. What I say is it's nice to be consistent. I am, yeah. yeah. There's a chap here called Zunkan at America Online, and he says it's human bones, a great amplifier of radio waves, and it's something to do with your elbows. <laughs> no, we had, we had loads that were to do with bits of your body doing this, so we had one guy who reckons it's your ears working his radar, which I quite like. <laughs> Another one, I'm not sure about this, saying it's your nasal cavities. Apparently they're as big as an acoustic guitar or something, which... They're not, are they? <laughs> Close, but well, it's I'm not. looking at you and I'm thinking it's quite a big schnozzer, but it's nowhere near an acoustic guitar. It, that ain't no guitar. <laughs> no. You know, I'm not going to see you come up. That bloke's got a guitar on his face. For a nose. It's rubbish. No, I know, there's some bizarre I mean, what they're basically saying, I think what the audience is saying here is that if you were to build a creature that had my bone structure with sort of enormous elbows and... Martin Clunes' ears. It's looking good. And Daniela Westbrook's nose. Nice touch. You could set off some nuclear missiles in North Korea from your house in Birmingham. Yeah, perfect. <laughs>